Dingai Fusion Records. Chapter 5. Looted. Within an instant, Xiang Shu grabbed the bag of gold ingots from the counter, but Chen Xing had already run outside. A group of soldiers just so happened to pass by outside. There were a lot of refugees, and their most pressing concern was people taking advantage of the chaos in the city to start looting. With this one shout from Chen Xing, dozens of people immediately blocked the entrance to the bank until not even a drop of water could trickle through. Meanwhile, the instigator, Chen Xing, had already strode away quickly to hide in the opposite alley. Wait, no. Chen Xing suddenly remembered a grave issue that guy seems to be a devil who could kill without even blinking an eye. Wouldn't causing such a ding get those Jin soldiers killed? Yet Xiang Shu remained calm and unperturbed as he came out with a bag of gold ingots. He was immediately surrounded by the Jin soldiers, everyone knocked their bows, denounced him indignantly, and asked Xiang Shu to put down the money he had stolen. Chen Xing thought as he hid in the alley, please don't kill those soldiers, and also resolved that if Xiang Shu really started fighting and killed someone in front of his eyes, he wouldn't use this protector no matter what. Hey. A voice suddenly rang out behind him, do you know how many people died because of Dongj Bank joint ventures greed for wealth? Why are you being such a busybody? Chen Xing abruptly looked back and realized that a tall and solidly built man was standing behind him, he wore a bamboo hat that covered most of his face, and a knife scar was visible amidst the untidy stubble on his slim side profile. His hands were hidden in his sleeves as he leaned against a wall in the alley, and his attention had apparently been drawn as well. Chen Xing didn't answer and just looked back. There were more and more soldiers now. They all had their bows knocked as they pointed them at Xiang Shu, who stood at the entrance of the bank. If the commander gave the order, all of them would release their arrows, and Xiang Chu would be pierced by so many arrows that he would turn into a sieve on the spot. He couldn't help but worry about Xiang Shu's safety. However, all he saw was Xiang Shu whistling once. The commander had threatened him several times, but it was all useless. Just as he was about to order the soldiers to release their arrows, Xiang Shu shook the bundle in his hands, and within an instant, gold blotted out the sky as they flew out with a whoosh, with the strength of meteors, the golden bullets glimmered brightly as they rained down on people who screamed tragically. Xiang Shu flipped onto the warhorse that had rushed over from a long street, and without so much as a glance, flicked his wrist at Chen Xing, who was hiding in the alley. Using hidden weapons, mounting the horse, and swiftly taking Chen Xing down all happened in such a fleeting instant, Chen Xing was still thinking, my family's protector is really strong. His reaction was delayed for a moment, and right when a gold ingot was right in front of his face and about to knock him unconscious, the martial expert next to him wearing a bamboo hat suddenly threw his hand out, whipping out a dark and heavy iron wine bowl and caught the gold ingot in it with a clang. It buzzed as it rotated around the bowl for half a day. Chen Xing, wait. Chen Xing ran out of the alley to give chase, but Xiang Shu had ridden the horse away and left in the blink of an eye. No trace of him could be seen anymore. People who were looting the gold ingots streamed in as he passed through, and the intersection was so crowded that not even a drop of water could trickle through. On the other hand, the soldiers all had their heads struck by the golden rain and lay sprawled on the ground unconscious. Chen Xin gritted his teeth, but he was unable to do anything about this new protector of his, he couldn't best him in a fight or catch up to him, so what else could he do? Your enemy. The martial expert walked out of the alley, grasping the wine bowl in his hand. He motioned for Chen Xin to retrieve the gold. Chen Xin just waved his hand, so the martial expert said, You don't even want gold? I'll take it then. Chen Xin has never had the habit of saving money. In any case, just by relying on how I Upiter was in his fate, he was so lucky that even he couldn't believe it himself. Whenever he lacked money, the heavens would naturally bestow him with some to spend and wouldn't allow him starve to death. So he nodded at the martial expert and thanked him for his help, then went into the bank by himself. The martial expert stroked his cheek, 
revealing half of his unkempt and handsome face. He chuckled before heading to the government office in my city. At noon, a new, white notice appeared outside the government office, wanted, robber to be captured across the seven seas. A description of Xiang Shu's attire and appearance could be found on the notice, to the one who catches the culprit, Dong's joint venture will give a reward of 50 tails. When Chen Xin went to the authorities to obtain the customs clearance document and saw that his protector had become a wanted criminal once again, he felt rather conflicted. His medicine bag and travel expenses had all been snatched by Xiang Shu, and he didn't have much in the first place, so did he rob the bank for travel expenses. Where was he planning to go? From the looks of it, he was heading north. Does he want to return to his tribe? You can't head north. The official instructed, all the roads have been sealed. Next. Chen Xing, I have to go to Chang'an no matter what. Here are the documents issued by Lord Xian of the Ministry of Official Personnel Affairs, could I trouble you to please do me this favor? It's not that I won't let you go, the official said, Xiangyang City has fallen, won't you just die if you head north? There is a plank road in MT. Long Zhong to the west of Xiangyang City. A man's voice rang out from behind, after leaving the mountains, keep heading north, leave Xingzhou, pass through the Wu Pass, and you'll be able to enter the Central Plains. If you head northwest from there, you'll be able to reach Chang'an. Chen Xin looked back and saw that it was the strong man wearing the bamboo hat again. The strong man bowed down slightly to look at him, his bamboo hat shielded his face from the sun, so Chen Xin wasn't able to see his face clearly. The official pursed his lips, then signaled for the two of them to look at the white notice posted in the government office's courtyard. In MT. Long Zhou, a thousand-year-old tomb has been plundered and excavated. The thieves have occupied the mountain and are wreaking havoc there, so the plank road is currently impassable. To those journeying through seeing Zhou Jianghu, we request for people of great insight to excise thieves. The official said, just two days ago, a team of people were dispatched to investigate, but none of them have returned. Don't just walk to your death, listen to my advice. What do you want to do at Chang'an at this time? The two countries are engaged in a vicious war. If you, Ahan, went to Chang'an, you would just be steamed by the Hu people and get treated as a two-legged lamb. It wasn't easy for your parents to raise you, just head south. Eventually, Chen Xin wore the official down. The official wasn't able to convince him, so he had to stamp a customs clearance document for him. The martial expert said, I'm going to Chang'an too, add me in as well. My name is Feng Jun. I've finally met someone normal. Chen Xin took the document and left, and the martial expert took off his bamboo hat under the warm spring sun. Within a split second, a spring breeze blew by, clouds dispersed, the thick layers of clouds unfurled, and the long lost sun cast out several rays of warm, heavenly light from the gap. All one could see was the bright countenance of the martial expert, his high nose bridge, his vermilion lips that were as red as a dot cinnabar, and his fair skin. Although his blue robe appeared shabby, it contained the subtle nobility of a robe that belonged to princes. He had his arms crossed as he stood in front of the government's office, illuminated by the light cast down on him it made Chen Xin feel warm in his heart, as if he was being bathed in a warm, spring breeze. That martial expert casually rubbed the indistinct beard on his cheeks again, meeting by chance means its fate. I'll have to trouble this little brother to take care of me on our journey. Let's go, we're not in a hurry to set off, so let's get some wine first that we can drink on the way. May I know how you're addressed in Jianghu? Let me introduce myself. My name is Chen Xing. I'm 16 years old this year, 7 Qi 9, 130 Jin. Then Yuxian will also introduce myself. I'm 22 this year, 9 Qi 1, not sure how many Jin I am, I haven't weighed myself in a long time. Feng Qianzhen has a refined appearance, and his words carried a tinge of chivalrous spirit in them. After getting two Jin of wine, 
he placed them in his horse's saddle while Chen Xing bought a horse from the market. He carried the dog that was wagging its tail and placed it into the saddle bag as well. The dog peeked out of the saddle bag, and they departed for MT. Long Zhong with this newly acquainted friend. Feng Qinjun was an easygoing person who had a witty conversational style. He was from Huainan, carried a broadsword on his back, and always took a wine bowl along with him. He was a young man who practiced martial arts and was exceptionally skilled. Chen Xing thought, why isn't he my protector? What's the name of your dog? Feng Qinjun asked. At first, Chen Xing wanted to say that he had picked it up along the way so it didn't have a name, but he suddenly changed his mind, it's called Xiangshu. It even has a surname. Feng Qinjun said. Chen Xing, an ah. Uh, Tian Qiyu, what do you do for a living? Feng Qinjun looked him up and down and felt that Chen Xing didn't seem ordinary. Nowadays, people who were on the run all looked unkempt, yet Chen Xing's appearance was tidy from head to toe, and even his dog was wearing a mink coat. Logically speaking though, if he was a pampered son of a rich family, it was impossible for him to not have someone following him in such troubled times. Otherwise, he could easily be murdered at any time. Don't ask any more, Chen Xing said, it's all sad affairs, so it's okay to not mention it. What about you? Feng Qinjun turned onto a small path and answered in earnest, I'm a professional killer. Chen Xing. Why is it that all the people he has met along the way like to kill people? Chen Xing couldn't help but get nervous, please don't let him bump into another rabid dog like Xiang Shu. How many people have you killed? Chen Xing asked worriedly. I haven't killed anyone yet. Feng Qinjun said, it's my first year as a professional killer. I'm currently rushing to my destination to complete the first job of my life. Oh Chen Xing felt more at ease. Feng Qinjun continued, Chang'an, to kill Fu Jian. Chen Xing, I wish brother Feng quick success in your mission. Wait, kill Fu Jian? How much would you be paid for that? Chen Xing thought that if it wasn't expensive, then maybe he could hire Feng Qinjun to capture Xiang Shu as well? He didn't require that he kill Xiang Shu, just tying him up would suffice. No wonder the Jin people wanted to torture him, even Chen Xing himself wanted to beat him up. By now, he had already tied Xiang Shu up and whipped him countless times over and over in his heart. A basket of steamed buns. Feng Qinjun answered. Very good. Chen Xing said, I'll pay you with two baskets of steamed buns, could you help me catch Xiang Shu? Why do you want to catch your own dog? Feng Qinjun was baffled, isn't it here? Chen Xing explained to him that Xiang Shu was the one who robbed the bank, and Feng Qinjun immediately said, then it can't be done. Chen Xing, three baskets of steamed buns. Feng Qinjun said, it's not about the number of steamed buns. I can't beat him, so even if I tried I'll just be embarrassing you. Chen Xing. Feng Qinjun began to explain to Chen Xing the concept of simply shaking a bundle to make over 30 gold ingots fly to their intended targets and knock all the enemies unconscious. At the very least, Feng Qinjun had seen that kung fu for himself, and his assessment of it was that he felt ashamed for being inferior to Xiang Shu. Also, when the tail of gold was flung towards Chen Xing, Feng Qinjun had used up almost all his strength just to stop it, even though he was also relying on the black iron wine bowl in his hands. On the other hand, it was obvious that Xiang Shu had done all that with ease and was clearly on a different level than Feng Qinjun. Chen Xing couldn't comprehend martial strength at all. He pondered as he said, Oh, is he that strong? Feng Qinjun murmured, That man's name is Xiang Shu. Where exactly did he come from? The two mounts entered empty. Long Zhong. After the cold spell in late spring, the ice on the gorges below the mountains had cracked, and the omnipresent snow that covered the treetops and branches had melted. All living things had revived and flourished, and the plants slowly woke from their slumber. 
Chen Xin held the reins of his horse in front of the ancient plank road that had existed since several hundred years ago and traveled with Feng Qianzhen the entire way. He decided that he might as well not hide it from him anymore, so he came clean about everything that had happened on his journey. When he heard about what happened in Xianyang City, Feng Qianzhen suddenly sighed, Zhu Su ah. He's a good man, Chen Xing said, but it's a pity that didn't help him in the end. It's not that Chen Xing didn't want to help Zhu Su defend the city, but his mission as an exorcist was more important to him. Yet unexpectedly, Feng Qianzhen said, Zhu Su, Wu, he defected. Ah! Chen Xing was instantly rendered speechless. Zhu Su was going to get cursed to death by the Jin court this time, but since ancient times, there have been many who defected to the enemy, so him joining the ranks wouldn't make much of a difference. An exorcist. Feng Qianzhen contemplated for a long time and nodded, so Xiang Shu is the protector you selected. You believe me? Chen Xin was surprised. I do ah, why wouldn't I? Feng Qianzhen said, if someone was lying, their gaze wouldn't be able to fool anyone. Now that your protector has ran away, what are you doing going to Chang'an alone? Chen Xin answered, I need to find what remains of the exorcism department headquarters from the Han dynasty, and I had even planned to fork out some money to hire bodyguards. But since you'll be accompanying me on the road, I'll be able to save on that sum. When the exorcism profession flourished during the Han dynasty in Chang'an, they had once set up a yamen. Since there was a bureau to check, then there must have been some information left behind. This was originally the next step in Chen Xing's plan after finding his protector. He wanted to see if there were any clues he could follow regarding the silence of all magic phenomenon that happened 300 years ago. And I also wanted to advise Fujian to stop killing people along the way. Chen Xing said, but since you're going to kill him, I won't waste time trying to persuade a dead man. But Feng Qianzhen's heart was as clear as a bright mirror. He casually said, even if Fujian dies, the northern wars won't stop, unless someone unifies the world. After chatting for a while, they began guessing Xiang Shu's origins again. Chen Xin knew nothing about Central Plains Jianghu, and Feng Qianzhen had no clue either. However, he was very curious and asked many questions about exorcists. When Chen Xin was studying at MT. Hua, he learned quite a lot of magic from books, but of course it was all limited to theory. Spiritual qi of the heaven and earth could be found in plentiful amounts everywhere in the human world, exorcists merely borrow it and convert it for their own use, which was why magic could exist. Now that silence had fallen on all magic, they naturally wouldn't be able to use any magic. All I can do is emit some light. Chen Xing demonstrated his light powers to Feng Qianzhen, then continued, I can provide you with some light when we're walking at night so we won't need to use lanterns. But if I use it for too long I'll start gasping for breath and feel very drained. But Feng Qianzhen didn't seem very surprised. He said, I've seen it in Huainan before. Someone could chop off his arm and put it back on again, and could even twist their head until it faced backwards. Can you stop? Those are Jianghu arts. Chen Xin quickly stopped Feng Qianzhen's attempt to twist his head to the back, you can do it if you want, but once you twist it my neck will break. Why do you want to carry such a heavy burden? Feng Qianzhen said, who are you doing this for? Just listen to yourself. Chen Xin answered, once Mara descends, the divine land will be destroyed, and such beautiful scenery and this world will be gone. Don't you think it'd be such a pity? Just like how Feng Qianzhen was going to kill Fujian for just a basket of steamed buns, Chen Xin had decided to shoulder this responsibility after his Shifu's death without really thinking it through seriously. His reason was very simple as well at the very least, he didn't want all these flowers, plants, birds, insects, fishes, and all the people who were alive to die of unnatural causes. People would always want to cherish beautiful things. Wouldn't one feel upset watching them get destroyed for no reason? They led their horses through the plank road, when they were passing by Yuxiantian, 
the path was extremely narrow. A torn piece of clothing belonging to a Jin soldier hung snagged on the rocks. Feng Kinjun suddenly said, wait. Then he stopped to inspect the cloth. Not long ago, the troops dispatched by my city's government to scout for news had also passed by this place. As the day approached its end, the valley was absolutely quiet, and not a single sound could be heard. Chen Xing looked up and suddenly saw a human figure flash past the peak of Yuxiantian. Brother Feng. Chen Xing suddenly felt that something was wrong. Following which, Feng Qianzhen suddenly grabbed Chen Xing's collar and dragged him three feet back. From above Yuxiantian, two bodies fell straight down. Then a loud blare sounded, and the first person smashed directly into the weakest part of the wooden plank road. The impact immediately smashed the plank road, and he fell down the steep cliff that had no end in sight along with the broken pieces of wood. The other person landed in front of Chen Xing and Feng Qianzhen. Their horses neighed loudly from fright and wanted to flee, but Feng Qianzhen immediately grabbed the reins and stabilized their mounts. Chen Xing almost shouted, but Feng Qianzhen covered his mouth and whispered, Don't be afraid. He's already dead. Chen Xing for a moment, and upon taking a closer look, he saw that the person in front of them was already a corpse that had blood streaming out of his seven orifices. Evidently, he had been thrown down from the top of Yuxiantian by someone. Chen Xing. They looked up at the same time. Chen Xing wanted to start cursing, but Feng Qianzhen raised his hand as a signal for him to keep silent. Somebody's up there. Chen Xing thought of the human figure that he had just seen flashing past. Feng Qianzhen said, let's talk after we pass through this plank road. End chapter. Dingai Fusion Records. Chapter 6. Drought Fiend Chaos. They were able to traverse the broken plank road with some difficulty. After leaving Yuxiantian, Feng Qianzhen let Chen Xing perch on an area of high ground for a brief reprieve, then turned back to drag the corpse over to inspect. It was a Jin soldier who had such a grievous fall that his entire body turned soft from the impact, and his body had been stiff and ice cold for a while. Feng Qianzhen said, this person was thrown down after he died. Can you tell what his cause of death is? The two of them thoroughly inspected the corpse but found no knife or arrow wounds on this Jin soldier's body. They couldn't find any purplish black bruises on his neck either. He could have been poisoned. Chen Xing said, his time of death was too long ago, so I can't tell. We'll have to find a crowner. Did the other party want to destroy the body and all its traces? The Jin soldier corpse's face was frozen in a twisted expression of horror evidently, he had suffered a fright before dying, but people would usually be fearful when they die an unnatural death, so it was rather difficult to judge. The only thing they could ascertain was that he had been dead for at least two days. His face was covered in a layer of white frost, and his corpse had not started decaying yet because of the cold weather. Coincidentally, it matched up with what the official in the city had told them. Feng Qianzhen, I'll go to the top to see if I can find any clues. You stay here for a while, if someone comes, just shout. I'll be able to see you. Chen Xing answered, it won't be a problem, I've always had really good luck so nothing will happen to me for the time being. The corpse didn't hit me when it fell down just now. Feng Qianzhen took an iron crossbow and had a slender, steel saber hanging by his waist as he hiked up Yuxiantian's wall to check. He looked back, my guess is that the one who threw the corpse knew that we were down there and didn't intend to hit you. Chen Xing. Feng Qianzhen had a nimble body, he first jumped onto a mountain rock, then turned around to leap onto another protruding mountain rock that was about a jung higher. He rose to the top like this step by step as he jumped to the mountain peak of Yuxiantian. Chen Xing was still contemplating Feng Qianzhen words knew that we were down there and didn't intend to hit me. What does that mean? A sudden realization dawned upon him. Was the one who threw the corpse trying to warn us not to pass through this place? For some reason, Chen Xing had the constant sensation of being secretly watched by a pair of eyes. Feng Qianzhen waved at him from higher ground, 
and Chen Xin waved back at him as well. What did you find? Chen Xin shouted. Feng Qinjun didn't answer, he had disappeared. Chen Xin started to feel apprehensive, but not long after, Feng Qinjun appeared again on another path down from the precipice while holding the reins to a warhorse. Chen Xin breathed a sigh of relief. Feng Qinjun noticed his expression and knew that Chen Xin was worried about him, yet he laughed, What's wrong? Tianke, were you worried that something might have happened to me? Chen Xin said, Of course. It's dangerous to operate alone in such a desolate mountain. Feng Qinjun suddenly said, We met by chance and have only known each other for less than 12 hours, little brat. Chen Xin didn't know why, but he felt a little embarrassed. Feng Qinjun carried the corpse with one hand and placed it on the horse, tied it to the horse tightly, then casually patted the horse's thigh, go. Take him back to my city, my city. Chia. The horse carried the body and ran away just like that. The two of them started a fire at the bottom of the mountain where there was no wind. They decided to spend the night out in the open, then think about what they would do after leaving the mountain tomorrow morning. Chen Xin faced the bonfire, and for a moment, both of them were silent and in a daze. Brother Feng, what are you thinking about? Chen Xin asked Feng Qinjun. The bonfire illuminated Feng Qinjun's face, and he said lightly, thinking about how that person died. What about you? Me too. Chen Xin answered. Time was limited just now, and it wouldn't be good to take the clothes off of a soldier who had sacrificed his life in the line of duty for a more detailed inspection. It could have been a very small weapon. Chen Xin said, some are extremely poisonous and can achieve that kind of effect. Feng Qinjun frowned deeply, never mind, let's just sleep. Worthy little brother, although Yuxian isn't as skilled in martial arts as that protector of yours, I am still somewhat capable. Stick to me when you sleep tonight, there is no need to be afraid. But Chen Xin wasn't particularly afraid. His luck has always withstood the test of time. No matter what enemies he faced, he wouldn't have to lift a finger before heaven cleaned them up for him. Before entering Xiangyang as he headed south, Xiangyang was under such a heavy siege that it was as if it was under an iron bucket. Chen Xin waited for a long time, but he really couldn't enter the city, so he decided to just take a gamble out of desperation. He held a lamp that he picked up from somewhere in the middle of the night and ran straight to level ground outside the city as he planned to forcibly conquer the city of the highest military importance. This foolish and absurd action indeed attracted the attention of the enemy's 200,000 troops. The Qin army immediately sent out a hundred men to chase him, but in the end, all their arrows either shot askew or were blown away by the wind. As Chen Xin ran and ran, he even got lost and couldn't discern which direction he was headed. With a hundred cavalry members in pursuit, he ran to the river outside Xiangyang city that had frozen over. Chen Xin slid and skidded over the river, but the cavalry members that pursued him were so heavy that they broke through the ice, and all of them fell into the water. As soon as he reached the other side of the river, Chen Xin found another ladder someone had put up and thought that it was probably a wooden ladder secretly set up to prepare for a siege. He immediately climbed up the ladder, and when he arrived at the top of the city wall, there wasn't a single Xiangyang defender in sight. Meanwhile, the Qin troops had pursued him to the bottom of the city gate tower. Chen Xin pushed the ladder over, which pushed quite a lot of soldiers into the frozen river again. At last, he tidied up his hair and robe before nonchalantly jumping down from the city wall and smoothly entered the city. Whenever he encountered trouble, throughout Chen Xing's life there would always be shouts of Yi. There's a ladder here. That's great. There's a horse here, that's great. That's great. That's great. Amidst the countless that's great, cheers of celebration, any enemy who dared to confront him along the way were inevitably doomed to plights of terror that made them wet their pants and crushing defeats. As Chen Xin thought about it, he turned around. Feng Qinjun was sleeping with his back facing Chen Xin, 
So Chen Xing reached out from behind him and started touching and pinching every part of Feng Qianzhen's arm. Feng Qianzhen. Chen Xing, Brother Feng, your arm's pretty firm. It'll probably take a lot of effort to give you an acupuncture treatment. On the contrary, Feng Qianzhen started feeling a little embarrassed, really? Chen Xing uttered an un and casually touched Feng Qianzhen's chest. He had studied medicine in the mountains for eight years, and one of the areas he studied was a appointment recognition. He practiced on a wooden doll first, then his shifu. The alignment of muscles and builds differed from person to person, and the locations of acupoints were also prone to variation. Chen Xing's shifu was ill for a long time so his body was on the thin side and wasn't as strong as Feng Qianzhen's physique, whose arms and chests felt like they possessed a powerful force. Feng Qianzhen reminded him, my dear brother, we've only known each other for a day, this is progressing too quickly. Oh. Chen Xing withdrew his hand that was pinching the ache appointment on Feng Qianzhen's shoulder, then casually said, I had no other intentions, I was just curious. Feng Qianzhen said, what are you curious about? Yuxiang is about 9 inches, under normal circumstances it doesn't reach 4 inches. Chen Xing hadn't understood what his 9 and 4 inches meant, but he said, You're not a killer, Brother Feng, you lied to me. Feng Qianzhen Feng Qianzhen, who had his back to Chen Xing, suddenly had a dangerous expression on his face, but he laughed, and how do you know that? A killer's arms and chest aren't shaped like that, Chen Xing said, My Shifu was a professional killer, but his stature was different from yours in many ways. There are also differences among killers, Feng Qianzhen turned around and explained, the martial arts techniques they practice are different. Wu. Chen Xing didn't insist on his stance and closed his eyes, yet on the other hand Feng Qianzhen started feeling uneasy. But even after exposing his lie, Chen Xing wasn't too concerned and was the first to fall asleep. A gust of wind blew by. Feng Qianzhen abruptly opened his eyes, and sniffed as he glanced northward. The Big Dipper in the sky gradually descended, time passed from the Zi period into the Zhou period, and the wind brought with it a strange smell. Feng Qianzhen immediately bolted upright. He turned around to look at Chen Xing, who was still sound asleep. The odor was getting stronger and stronger it drifted over from where the wind was blowing. Feng Qianzhen gently pulled his saber out, raised it, looked around, then walked towards the place where the odor was coming from. The two horses that had been tied to a nearby tree began to notice that something was amiss and became agitated. A soft rustle traveled over from the shrubs. Feng Qianzhen stopped in front of the bushes, wielding a dagger in his other hand, when suddenly a figure came lunging out at him soundlessly. Feng Qianzhen immediately brandished his saber, and his saber struck into that black figure's chest like a streak of lightning. At the same time, he suddenly withdrew and retreated, he took a huge step back, drew out the dagger with his left hand, raised his hand almost at the same time, and aimed it behind him to stab his other attacker's neck. Feng Qianzhen The saber in his right hand had pierced straight through his enemy's solar plexus, a vital point, so his enemy should have been killed with this one strike from his saber. What's more, the dagger in his left hand had directly stabbed into his enemy's neck, both moves were planned very carefully to ensure no miscalculation and should have ended the lives of both attackers from the front and back at the same time. However, what Feng Qianzhen never expected was for the two attackers to show no regard for the sharp blades that had penetrated into their bodies. The one behind him threw his arm out and looped it around Feng Qianzhen's neck, while the one in front gripped the lower half of Feng Qianzhen's body tightly. Feng Qianzhen's eyes widened and he was hit by the stench of decaying corpses the faces of the two deceased Jin soldiers appeared in front of him. Dead people. Feng Qianzhen's neck was being choked, he wanted to call out to Chen Xing to wake him up, but he couldn't make a sound. He raised a foot to kick the living corpse in front of him. There was a muffled thud the sound of broken bones could be heard from the chest of his opponent as it was sent flying and fell down the mountainside. He had dealt with the one in front, but the grip of the one behind him became increasingly tighter. 
A huge mouth dripping with rotten blood was less than three inches from his cheek, and its open mouth was about to bite down on his neck. Chen Xing's dog woke up. It ran over to bear its teeth and bark at the living corpse. Feng Qianzhen turned around and lifted the corpse up, but its hands didn't loosen its grip on his neck at all. He flipped the dead corpse monster onto the ground and fractured the dead man's arm, yet the dead man still wouldn't let go no matter what. Moves used to deal with living people were completely useless against this kind of monster that did not fear pain. Chen Feng Qianzhen struggled to call out and signaled the dog to hurry and wake his master up. The two horses were startled and broke free of their reins, then ran away and disappeared without a trace. Chen Xin was sleeping very soundly and usually would not even be roused by thunderous claps. Feng Qianzhen and the living corpse were constantly rolling about and wrestling with each other just three steps away from him, yet all Chen Xin did was turn over with his back towards Feng Qianzhen. The living corpse firmly gripped Feng Qianzhen's neck with both hands, while both its legs were wrapped around his waist. It looked just like a monster that was possessing his body. It opened its mouth several times with the intent to bite him, but its attempts were always dodged by Feng Qianzhen. Feng Qianzhen dragged the living corpse that was like a maggot in one's tarsals. And he was about to suffocate from being strangled. He struggled to climb towards Chen Xing and finally managed to grab the blanket under Chen Xing's body, then yanked it away violently. Chen Xing rolled over and hit his head against a stone on the ground. He instantly woke up with a loud exclamation. Chen Xing, Brother Feng. Dog, Woof. 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 Feng Qianzhen. Ah. Chen Xing cried and roared, What? Ah. A drought fiend. Feng Qianzhen's vision went black, but he forcefully tried to wrench off the living corpse's hands. Chen Xing immediately rushed forward, stop barking. Is it a drought fiend? Brother Feng? What are you doing? Feng Qianzhen pointed to the arm of the living corpse with one finger and grit his teeth, he almost couldn't breathe anymore. Chen Xing hurried forward to help him wrench the living corpse off. The living corpse growled lowly at him and began to bite at him. Chen Xin quickly withdrew his hand and shouted, A drought fiend. A living drought fiend. Wait no, that's not appropriate, it's a monster. Feng Qianzhen. Chen Xin picked up a stone and forcefully smashed it onto the living corpse's fingers. Feng Qianzhen had already run out of breath and made a gesture to convey hurry and run ba, don't worry about me anymore. He stumbled with the living corpse and exhausted all the strength he had left to harshly slam it into the mountain wall. Wait ah! Uh. Chen Xing looked back, and noticed a dagger lodged in the neck of the living corpse. He went forward to pull it out and exerted a lot of strength to try and cut the corpse's arm off with it. However, the bonfire was already extinguished, so it was pitch dark, and nothing could be seen. Chen Xing took a deep breath lit up his heart lamp, and a resplendent, white light shot out from his hand that illuminated the face of the living corpse. Within an instant, the living corpse roared it was actually afraid of the light of the heart lamp that Chen Xin had released. It raised its arms to shield itself from the light. Once its arms loosened its grip, Feng Qianzhen broke free and let out a thunderous roar, then threw the living corpse over his shoulder and brutally hurled it onto the mountain rocks. Before Chen Xin could process what had happened, Feng Qianzhen shouted, Get back! Feng Qianzhen had exerted a hundred percent of his strength to fling the living corpse away, and it hit the precipice. Its brain spurred out from the impact and emitted a foul stench, then its body slowly fell down and went limp it had died a second time. Chen Xin was gasping for breath, where did the monster come from? Chen Xin was about to go closer when Feng Qianzhen, who couldn't stop coughing, grabbed him. He said, we can't stay here for long, let's go. Wait. Chen Xing said, I have to take a closer look. It's my first time seeing a drought fiend, where on earth did it come from? This wasn't the Phi RST time Chen Xing had encountered a Yao. The existence of drought fiends had long been recorded in ancient texts, 
legend has it that these ancient corpses would not rot for years after they died and would instead turn into walking corpses, they are called drought fiends. It's just that after seeing one in the flesh, he couldn't help but feel curious. Feng Qinjun just felt that everything that had happened right in front of him had far surpassed his scope of acceptance. His eyes were brimming with shock, and he kept gasping for breath. Suddenly, the dog started barking in the direction of the woods again. There's a lot more over there, little brother, are you sure you want to study it right now? Feng Qinjun said. Chen Xin turned around, and emerging from all directions, he saw over 30 or 40 living corpses on the mountain slope and below it, some of them had intact bodies, while others wore tattered clothes. He couldn't tell how long they had been dead, and they were swaying unsteadily from side to side as they stumbled toward them. No, no, there's too many, I'll see again next time B.A. Chen Xin quickly changed his tune. Then why aren't you running yet? Feng Qinjun decisively made up his mind and took Chen Xing along as they ran in the opposite direction. Feng Qinjun was so fast that within an instant, he was about 10 feet away from Chen Xing. Chen Xing kept looking back as he ran, and only then did Feng Qinjun realize that this kid didn't practice martial arts and couldn't run, so he immediately turned back to rescue him. Yet on the way back, several living corpses appeared unexpectedly. They blocked Chen Xing's path and pounced toward him. Chen Xing didn't bother shouting again. He came to a sudden halt, then turned around to run to the edge of the cliff. Feng Qinjun ran all the way back again. Chen Xing ran to the front of the cliff, grabbed a withered vine on the mountain, and started climbing up. A living corpse had already caught up to him, so Feng Qinjun had to rush over to save him. Chen Xin was halfway up when he forcefully tugged on it, and the massive stone that was on the top of the withered vine immediately caused the world to tremble as it rolled down. Watch out! Feng Qinjun shouted. Chen Xin heard the warning, turned sideways to dodge, and spun one circle in mid-air. The massive rock from the top of the mountains fell down and crushed the three living corpses below Chen Xin first, then continued rolling down the slope with a loud rumble and knocked down a whole row of living corpses in an instant. The rock crushed all of them, fell onto the second slope, and vanished without a trace. On the mountainside road, Feng Qinjun was surrounded by a circle of living corpses with only a dagger in his hand. He surveyed his surroundings, Chen Xin had to escape his predicament, so he quickly laid down face flat. Feng Qinjun shouted, emit light. They're afraid of light. Chen Xing immediately placed his right hand on the left side of his chest, but just before the heart lamp was released, another figure appeared that swept past the encirclement like a swift gust of wind. Several whooshes could be heard, and light ref acted off the edge of a Huan Chao saber. The saber was swung around and it cut the surrounding living corpses into two, then got thrown to Feng Qinjun. It was the weapon that Feng Qinjun had dropped below the mountain slope. Thanks. Feng Qinjun said. When the man's face came into view, Chen Xing's heart jolted, and he suddenly exclaimed, Xiang Shu. It's you. The one who came was Xiang Shu. He was empty handed as he leapt over the shrubs and led the other two along to dash toward the front of the cliff. Chen Xing suddenly remembered the corpses that had been thrown down a few days ago. He asked, You're the one who wanted us to make a detour. Xiang Shu stopped at the foot of the cliff and glanced at Chen Xing. Wait here, don't leave. Leave the mountain at dawn. Then he turned around and actually went back along the way he came from. Where are you going? Chen Xing shouted. Just as he was about to give chase, Feng Qinjun grabbed him. What was that? Feng Qinjun asked Chen Xing, explain clearly. Chen Xing said, it's too complicated to explain, there must be something fishy about this. He explained to Feng Qinjun about the legend where corpses that don't rot for a long time turn into drought fiends. However, the ancient texts did not record the reasons for their transformation into drought fiends. All he knew was that when drought fiends appear in this world, severe droughts would occur all over the world. Droughts in the divine land, both minor and major ones, 
had already lasted for more than 160 years. Mt. Longzhong is a precious feng shui land in the human world, but drought fiends had actually appeared here what did it mean? And why did Xiang Shu reappear here? Chen Xin had to follow along to investigate no matter what. With the protection of I Upiter, as long as he was careful, nothing should happen to him. But if he didn't follow him, it may be even more likely for Xiang Shu to encounter danger than him. End chapter